Hi guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question a lot of people have asked me many times. Why does my 520i have an OKU sticker? artificial intelligence skin so in today's video uh, I'll be talking I'm talking about my childhood okay so well I grew up in well in a in a suburban middle-class family Taling Jaya we started off in a terrace house when I was born then a few years later after my brother was born we shifted to a, a bungalow house okay at that time it was the I still remember it was the, the uh, 1980s property crash so my father was able to to get his hands on a on a fully detached house at a relatively cheap price because at that time property prices came crashing down right so uh, so yeah he managed to 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 get himself a bungalow at what, at the price of about what 200 over thousand ringgit now the, the the house is worth easily five or six times that value but that's besides the point so uh but growing up we ours was what really one of those those typical you know middle class families uh we only ever had one car at home at any given time all right it was uh it was a corolla ke70 when i was born then later when my brother was born they my family sold the ke70 and upgraded upgraded to a 1.5 liter proton saga that was still the 8 valve version the 8 valve and then the saga was was then sold out for a vira 1.5 in 1993 first batch vira then we sold the, the, the vira for another vira 1.6 in 1996 the face lifted model and and then i think 2003 when i went when i was in college or when i was in uni when i was in college like, that was the first time in my lifetime that my family actually had two cars in the house because after i think about two years a year or two after i got my license my family my father finally decided to, to buy a second car at home which we got a uh a, an iswara iswara 1.5 automatic <laughs> <laughs> absolutely ridiculous car three speed auto fuel consumption is same whether you drive it in town or on highways it's that one tank kl penang habis all right you 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 you, you fill up that car in kl you reach penang you have to refill again it was that ridiculous so growing up i didn't have a very luxurious lifestyle all right i mean a family didn't have very fancy cars uh i didn't have I didn't enjoy things like video games, all right? A lot of indulgences that I saw my friends at that time bringing to school, like, you know, the Street Fighter sticker books, la, the, uh, got it, all the, you know, the, the all the gate, little Game Boy, la, matcha, matcha, all those, a lot of things um, was were not given to us, was, was not made available to me and my brother, okay? We had, we had, a, we, my father did buy us a computer when I, when we were in like late primary school and I was also one of the very late among my friends to adopt a handphone right the old Nokia 321 I didn't get a Nokia 321 until I was like what 18 or 19 years old so growing up I would say that I, I didn't enjoy a very luxurious lifestyle but but I never I was I never starved either all right there was always enough food on the table there was always things uh, there was always something to eat in the fridge when I was hungry okay there were no that there were no no people ringing our doorbells to collect that or any that kind of thing so to sum up I had a very modest but uh, but a an overall very comfortable life growing up so by any measure any measure all right this kind that kind of life is what we call distinctly average 
But in the case of my family, that, uh, achieving that was a remarkable achievement because my father provided all that, all that, all right? Being the sole breadwinner of the family, all right? As a, working as a garment servant and without the use of his two legs. Yeah. So, you see, the, what happened was that when he was three years old or four years old, my father contracted polio. Okay. So, since then, he lost, uh, he lost the ability to walk or stand on his own two feet. And he didn't go to school until he was, what, 10 years old? But he, uh, he he accelerated his way through school because he was quite a quite a quite a book smart kid, right? He accelerated his way to school, and by the time he was sec in secondary school, he had caught up with with the with 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 other other kids of his age, and and you know and and, and he continued until then. He went he finished school. He went into uni. Uh, became uh, graduated, and then after that, he he got a job as a. Uh, as teaching in, in University of Malaya so I mean if any of you guys who are who went to University of Malaya during the 70s or 80s or 90s if you remember a lecturer who walked in the maths department who walked on two crutches that's my father so um, yeah so he 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 went he went through all that okay and uh, and so 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 then he progressed through the ranks in uh, in 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 university. Uh, became eventually become he got his masters, got his PhD, became uh, became an associate, rising in rank to become associate professor. Yeah, all right. All this whilst um, you know supporting supporting me and not just me and not just raising me and my brother. My mother was a housewife. And at the same time, right during that time, my grandparents were staying with us. And besides my grandparents, one of my dad's auntie who stayed with us. Yeah. So at, at one point in time, there were seven of us at home, all of whom were being fed by a man who couldn't even stand on his two feet. And on top of that, when I was in school, uh, we my 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 father was even able to afford having a maid at home. We had we actually had a uh, had a had a had a helper at, had a domestic helper at home. All right, I think initially it was a day helper. Then after that, later on, as my grandparents got old, we got a, a, a stay at home, you know, full time maid living living in with us. Uh, was a very pleasant experience, which is why you which is why uh, you now right as I, in my adulthood I'm very 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 reluctant to to have a stay home maid and and i'm glad my wife shares that sentiment with me so but but i'm digressing so the thing is that my father provided all that okay without without you know uh, whilst being an okay you so uh, it's a story that I've, I've never I've never talked about before because my father is a very is a very private person in general. He's, he's not a man for for a lot of words, but I think this year around I, I felt in, uh, that day um, after Tana invited me to his live show, uh, I just felt uh, like putting this out on you know out in the open today because I, I think it's um, I want to celebrate that that I deeply appreciate you know what my father has has accomplished. You know, in his life, life. You know, the thing is, and the thing is this. You see, today, right now, if I compare where I am today versus where my father was when he was at my age, okay, um, I'm earning more money than him. I am. I have two BMWs in in my garage, but you know, but that's on paper. I think, to be frank, I I don't. If I were to look back at what he, you know, look at look at deeper, you know, at what he meant, what he overcame, and what he provided for, I, I don't think I have actually I'm I've actually measured up to what he accomplished when he was at my current stage of life. So 
I think, you know, growing up, right, I think what I'm really thankful for is, um, firstly, I'm thankful that my father overcame his physical disability. He didn't let his disability become a hindrance uh, for him to achieve his greatness in life. Okay? Um, he... And, and, you know, every time when I look at my father, you know, he reminds me that, you know, if if he can can put food on the table for as many as seven people at one go those of us who can walk on our two feet really really have no excuse okay and you know and and the, the interesting story about the OKU sticker on my E39 is this you see what happened was at that time uh, I think my mother's car went into the workshop or something like that so I passed this car over to, to I asked, so I passed this car to my mother to use for a few days, right? And 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 that was why she put the OKU sticker on the car. Uh, and the thing is that I, then after that she used the car for a few days, and I and, and then I took the car back. I just left the sticker. There. I didn't bother to 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 remove it. Neither do I do I abuse it. If any of you are wondering. Now, firstly, when during my father's youth, disabled parking base wasn't a thing in, in, in Malaysia, okay? But even when they started slowly appearing, we rarely used the disabled parking base. So we always parked at, uh, at the normal base, you know, and, we, and, and you know, my father and, and, rest of, and, and the whole family, we would take a slow walk to the entrance of the mall or the restaurant or whatever. Parking at at the disabled bay, even though we were carrying a disabled person in our car, just felt it wasn't the norm for us. It was. It's really only I think the last four or five years that because my father does is not getting any younger. All right, and the fact is when he walks on his crutches, his whole body weight is resting on his shoulders. And those shoulders have taken quite a bit of wear and tear over the years. And uh, and and in more recent times, you know, it's decided, okay, you know what? We uh, we have started my mom, especially when if my mother were to drive me around, they would use the 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 view the, the OKU base. Okay. And and that's that's how and that's how we you know that's how my Ethan man ended up with the OKU sticker on the windscreen. Okay, this Father's Day is is, is maybe in a way a bit screwed up because of the pandemic and all so for some of us visiting our dads may not be an option you know may not be a safe thing to do may not be a responsible thing to do with the pandemic ongoing but um, I think it's good that we all take stock uh, appreciate what for what what our dads have done for us and uh, yeah and and uh, and celebrate the occasion, you know, it could be a phone call, it could be a video call, maybe even a text. Okay, yeah. Oh no, John, I got tired. Bus up, my way. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm not. Ah, I pay for the phone. I'm not. 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 I'm Okay, so anyways guys, I'm in Kenzone SS6 and uh, what happened was that a few weeks ago when I was doing that, you know, tire size video, I found that the spare tire in that I was that I'm carrying in this car well, it's 20 years old, so decided to to uh, to come here, Kenzone, ask them for a see if they have any like used tires, okay, and yeah, and ask them to and ask them to just swap swap over, right? So at least because the old tire is 20 years old, I'm not sure you in the event of an emergency if I were to put it in the car put it on the car I'm not sure if it would hard, so better just to change originally this car was also running these a, a, a 17 inch spare 
all right but it was but because I the previous set of wheels that were on this car had went to the 525 so I transferred that spare which is a matching design to the 525 and now this one took the previous spare from the 525 which was 16 inch wheel but in any case if any of you E39 owners out there with a, with like a loose 17 inch wheel you want to dispose of do let me know okay I just it will be because then it will be easier when I eventually next time do uh, you know rotation yeah